Hey YouTube, Copper Sand here. I was thinking back about some of my favorite moments in Maple Story. So here are iconic Maple Story moments that only the real OGs remember. Make sure to share your favorite Maple Story moments in the comments as well. The first memory that I want to share is a classic Maple Story moment, and not one that I particularly miss. But it was kind of funny regardless. So a long time ago, when my back and my knees didn't hurt yet, in Amoria there was a special low level quest. This quest was called Beauty or Beast, and it sure lived up to its name. Maplers had to collect 25 squishy liquids from green slimes, an easy task that anyone could accomplish in either the slime tree or any of the other huge maps around Ilinia that had slimes in them. Players would then get a free hair coupon from Claudia as a reward for this quest. But there was a catch. The results of this hair coupon were random and I'm pretty sure that about 90% of the Maplers got this exact beautiful haircut in this exact color because it would also change the color of your hair usually to orange and and usually you had this beautiful pumpkin hair as a result. I know some free to play players who would just create characters over and over, complete the quest and then try and get a nicer hairstyle. Uh, I actually remember rocking this exact pumpkin hair for years on my mane because I didn't want to spend any cash to change it and I was wearing a helmet anyway but whew. Another thing that I really miss from old school Maple Story is just browsing the free market. In this part of the game, people would just stand still for days, spamming whatever they were buying or selling, adding like at 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 behind whatever they were saying, so their text box would appear bigger, and that way you would actually notice their text because everyone was spamming. And in this map, there were multiple rooms where you could set up your own store to sell your wares. And sometimes, if you were super lucky, you would find a store where someone accidentally mistyped their item price, and you would get a rare item for a lot cheaper. Store management was quite stressful as well. After each maintenance, players would rush into the free market to get that rare spot in free market one. And if you didn't position your store correctly and parked it in two spots, you would get endlessly defamed throughout the day. Some people would even just rush in, set up a store with a random etc drop for like 100k mesos, and that way they would sell their spots. Once all items in the store were sold out, the store would disappear and someone else could take it. But spots could be stolen like this as well, it was the wild west really. There also were two tiers of stores, a cheaper and more expensive one that would cost any cash. The more expensive one you could set up and go on about your business, the cheaper ones required you to stand in that spot to keep the store open, limiting you from doing anything else. Even DCing meant your spot was gone. Losing a spot to parents that turned off your PC was a common thing back then. And of course, us plebs would just have to actually stand in the entrance of the free market, spamming whatever we were selling because we could not afford any stores. But oh man, the hours I spent just browsing stores. The market in the current game is a lot more convenient for sure, but it was really fun to window shop back then. MapleStory was a slower game back then, but it did have its super tense moments. Like for example when party questing, and then especially when entering a party quest. Party quests were the main way to level up back then. However, if there already was a party inside, let's say, Kerning PQ, then no one else could enter that party quest in that channel. Other players in the same channel had to first wait for that current party to finish their quest, exit, and then they could enter. Which resulted in players spam clicking and even going as far as using auto clickers just to try and get in. But there was a nifty function in the game that would make sure you didn't need to click for just 15 minutes. Back then, Maplers could type slash find and then the name of the player they would like to find to see the exact map they were in. If you were in the same channel as that player, the game would tell you exactly which map they were. That way, if you knew the name of the person that was inside the party quest, you could track their progress and start clicking as they reached the final stages of the quest. I actually remember specifically making a character with a capital I instead of an L to make sure that I was a little bit harder harder to track. Like let's say I would make a let's say I would make a character called Wellness and then one of the L's would be like a capital I to throw people off so they couldn't track me. Because Maples would even write down the name of others that they would see in the entry area so they could track them as well in case they didn't make it inside the party quest. Some Maplers even sold the names of people that they were tracking as a way to make mesos. That's where selling track comes from. Upgrading was also very different back then. There was no potential, no Star Force, no spell traces. There just were 10%, 60% and 100% scrolls. 
The less success chance the scroll had, the better the stats it would give. And another moment of euphoria or excitement back then was getting a 10% scroll to pass on an item. Some traders would even take this a step further, crafting special gloves called work gloves that all the players could wear. They would then use a 10% scroll in the first slot, and if it failed, they would just toss the item and retry until one of them worked. Having a 10% scroll work while having all other slots still available was a sure way of making a nice chunk of mesos in the free market back in those days. Players would just keep scrolling the glove with either 60% or even more 10% that are really crazy to try and make this godly work glove. Oh, and I have one more fun one just for you, and I'm sure no one misses this one. If you were playing old school Maple, you must remember the horrible patcher that the game was using back then. This patcher would fail if you would lose your internet connection for just a second, or if you suddenly ran out of space on your hard drive. And back then, internet was slow as heck, so you were often stuck for hours just trying to patch the darn game, only for it to corrupt halfway through so you could start all over again. Sorry, I was feeling nostalgic, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make a nostalgia video. What are some of your more iconic Maple Story memories? Sending out noobs to check for Balrog, party quest smuggling, getting a mastery book to work? Let me know in the comments. And that's all I had for today. Thank you so much for watching. You're all amazing. And as always, special thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to... Niels de Comic, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Jesus Rodriguez, Kali Mora, Wiley, Riser Ayu, Backspace OTI, Ziggy Deer, History Cannon, Safronix, Flidiot, Knife Zoo, Cloudfix, Sir Tito655, Michael Manchaka, Raytheus, Afterlord, Betrayal1489, Silvio Nato, Striker Elk, Tidal One Fun, Victor Sundstrom, Matthias Simonson, Mr. Anark, Ben on Games, The Passenger, Connie Wu, Max Bernhardt, Mukao 1017, BB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Gabriel Eck, Feco, Vake Botnet, Dante Victory, Matthew Death, Snack HBG, Only, Lord Fasil, Spots the Kaiser, That Archie Guy, Louis Bento Brandau, Snuffu Pop, Tails Curspet, The Wolf Drake, Gaber Wolf, Live Love Maple Story, Kali Duckfoos, Quinn Migu, Sir Otter, Nix, and Gulame Paiva. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling.